Hey Mets fans, Chente Camacho of Bearded Mets Banter here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Before we get started, as always, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go ahead and click that little button down there and do what the little dog is doing. And hit the bell for notifications when I drop new material and videos so you can stay up to date with my new releases. Uh, for today's episode of Bearded Mets Banter, I'm having a special guest, fellow Mets fan and fellow baseball enthusiast Daniel Scotty joins me. As I pick up the episode, we're in mid-conversation right before I start asking him five key questions into the Mets 2021 season. The seven train is right there, y'all. Get ready. And here we go. Let's go Mets. This is a Mets Willits Point Bound 7 local train. The next and last stop is Mets Willits Point. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Mental part of the game, it, it can't be under underestimated. That, that will take that will that takes a lot from you, man. Especially, especially when when you know, like like Khalil Lee when he started off the way he started, for him to get the hit to oh, get the ball around the the bat on the ball the way he did to get his first major league hit, that must have felt good for him because I know those first other plate appearances that he struck out, man. Like that must have been weighing on his mind. Yeah, but that, that's not an easy thing to come back from. A lot of people. Would have struck out that eighth, ninth, tenth time, you know. Yeah. It, it, Once you got eight in the hole already, it's t- it's o- it, that ninth and tenth is only tougher now. It's um, yeah, it's inevitable at some point. You know what I'm saying? It, it depends on your psyche. He showed the mental fortitude to get through it, and bro, that swing like we talked about, that swing was beautiful with, with the way he hit that ball, man. It, man. Man, it was it was it was Griffey-ish, but then then you you said oh, the perfect one. You said Uncle Cliff. Uh, Uncle Cliff, but I went back and watched it. He, I, I, you know, for some reason watching it live, I don't know if I was worked up, but I thought it was the one-handed man. It was such a short two-handed release, like an Agassi backhand. Just yeah, it was beautiful. No arms, just all waist and waist and wrist. It was pure wrist. He just wrist. whipped around it. Man. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah, let, let's jump right into these questions I have for you, bro. Um, you know, we already spoke a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me about the season and how it started for us. But for you, what were your personal expectations uh, from this team coming into the season 2021? Eh, that's a tough one, man. I, 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 I can't say World Series just because you, you can't say that's an expectation, right? Um, but it's on, it was on my mind because Cohen came in on whatever it was, day two, and was like within what three to five years. Three to five year window, right? So it's on the mind, right? That, that it's, it, it may be a possibility on the the – slim side but i gotta say for me realistically competitive baseball in the fall that's what's up that, that that's a great answer baseball um a playoff series hopefully a playoff win I, I don't see why this team shouldn't make an nlcs i think the division the division's gonna get more competitive let's be real um yes having said that with the with the it's all gonna come down to the pitching for us if the pitching comes back and is healthy and we're four or five deep in the regular season no team is gonna beat us in a, in a series once it gets to the playoffs with that team. So that's, that's what I would say. Keep it short and sweet. It's competitive October, maybe November baseball. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that those are good expectations to have and, and, and fair expectations too, you know, given the way ownership built us up and the way they've put this team together. So this is a team that I can see uh, accomplishing your goal and your expectations for this season. All we can do is just sit and watch. Right. I mean, They've given us something to cheer for already as we've been speaking uh, when we started. And, and I'm just sitting here hoping that this could come to fruition and we could just remain competitive. The boys come back and, and we could make this run because we know that something special is brewing here, given the way this team is playing with the way it's comprised right now. So my message to Mets fans is like, be excited. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand the complaints and I understand the frustrations so far leading up to where we are right now in the season. But, you know, it, we do have a reason to be optimistic with the roster and the guys we don't have here right now. So, yeah, man, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I would like to see us playing some meaningful baseball down late summer, leading into September, October, hopefully November. You know, we could be making some deep playoff run. You know, fingers crossed. Let's go Mets, baby. 
Here's question two for you, my brother. Uh, besides Lindor's early struggles, um, who has been a disappointing new player for you? Yeah, man, that that one that one's a bit easier than the expectations question. For me, it's it's McCann, bro. It's got to be McCann, and it's not it's not even the average man. I, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of Mendoza line hitters in in Queens in my tenure as a Mets. <laughs> But it's, it's the quality of that bat that I've been seeing from him. Um, stuff we've been talking about, working counts. He's, I feel like every time he's up there, it's, it's 0-2. And he's forced to – he's just in a bad spot, uncomfortable at the plate. Protecting the plate, yeah. Yeah, protecting the plate, exactly. As opposed to going up there with the hitter's approach, trying to do something. And I feel like he's – for whatever reason, I feel like he's always up with guys in, in scoring position. Yeah. Right? Loaded or, and it's always with, it seems like it's always with one or two, one or zero or one out. So pretty much I'm always looking for McCann to, I haven't seen him drive one ball in a sack fly spot yet. Yet. Always, and, and, and his swing, it's like, I don't want to get too technical into the, the swing mechanics, but it, why are there so many ground balls, bro? Maybe you could help shed some light on this more than me, but it seems like he can't lift the ball. I know he's always was supposed to be an uh, you know go the other way with it line drive to the gap guy that's fine but he just I just haven't seen him you know the swing look like a guy I want up in these big spots yet so right. and that's tough when when you when you're when you're a team that can't score runs in these spots because it, it seems like the lineup flips to him every time it's one of mm -hmm. these spots and lately I want Nito up in them yes Even, you know it Tell me there's second and third no out right now. Who do I want up on the Mets in general? Tomas Nido. Nido. Confidence is there. The contact is there. Back to the ball. I don't I don't really expect that he's going to strike out in one of these spots. I, he'll do something. or put it in play. And you saw him make the, the Yadier style throw from the knees. The other yeah, day. man. So you're not even losing much. And McCann's made some plays behind the, behind the plate for us. Big right. plays. Yes. But Nido can make those plays too. So... I'm not saying, you know, McCann's end of the bench is staying there, but I, the one aspect of Rojas's managerial style that I like is he rides the hot hand for the most he part. Does. I, he did it last year with Jimenez, too. Yes, yes, Rosario yes. Something yes. Rosario and he played Jimenez and Jimenez. He played Jimenez. Jimenez was balling. Yes, yes he, he, he does. He does. You're right about that, Scotty. So jump in real quick. He is oh, yeah. very good at that. Like, he notices – who's rocking and he rides the hot hand. Like you said, that's a very good observation. And, and man, the, the, the Nito game, I, I'm, I may be right. Don't think so. But the, the game after Nito had three hits, he starts him the next game. He hits a home run late. Home run. Like pretty much win us the game in the, yeah. in the ninth, top of the ninth. So these type of things, and this comes back to what we were saying about confidence and all the other stuff, but it's like, these aren't just concepts. This stuff actually, it's just as important as analytics. So right. Guys that put super stock into the quant side of the game, you got to have just as much respect for the the between the ears part of the game, right? And the, and the confidence aspect. So, not to pile on McCann, but that's my disappointment. I think it's just going poorly for him right now. Yeah, I feel bad for the guy. He still hasn't had that. He needs that game where it's like oh, two extra base hits, three RBIs, and and maybe then he could parlay that into some confidence up there. I could see that he happening. Had double to to put them ahead the other night. It he was a pinch hit. He, he hasn't he hasn't hit his stride yet. Right. So that's right. my that's my disappointment so far. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one too. He really has been a disappointment offensively and you know defensively too. He's had games where he struggled to keep the ball in front of him. Yeah, pass ball. Uh, yeah, pass balls, and, and, and it's not even the ones that he blocks. It's the ones that get by him to the side that he should block a little easier because his movement behind the plate is actually pretty good yeah. defensively. And you can see that the offensive struggles are translating to the defense a little bit. It's affecting him. So uh, if I could change anything mechanically on him, I, like I told you before, I close up his stance just yeah, a little bit. So open at the plate too. It's so open. I mean, and I understand that he's like that because he wants the ball to get in a little deeper. So I, I fix it by moving him back in the box a little more and closing his stance. Uh, just a bit. Uh, the swing is long right now. It's not very compact. It takes a long time to generate through the hitting zone. Yeah, and that's why everything's a ground ball to second base. Second base. Really yeah, bad. and he's hitting into the into double plays a lot, and yes, yes, that's alarming. And you know, yes. hopefully, he gets over it. He'll he'll get over it. He's a pro, and we also have to remember too, Scotty. He he uh he's never really been a full time major league catcher. That yeah, which 
alarming. You're right. Yeah. It, I mean, and, and that's another thing that a lot of Mets fans don't know. A lot of Mets fans that don't follow baseball on the other side of the league that only because you know you have Mets fans that just are for the Mets, Mets and yeah. they don't they don't sit there and they don't watch league baseball. McCann's an outstanding defensive catcher, but McCann's never caught over 118 games in no. the season. Uh-huh. So this guy's primarily never been a full-time catcher. So for him to be thrust into a full-time situation. So he too, like Lindor, is feeling a little pressure. You know, he got paid he 40 million for four years. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, it's a big yeah. contract for a guy that's, that wasn't making very much money. Yeah, and that's that's a great point too, because not only was he not in every day, he was, in, he was a starting catcher, but like you said, not every every day. Not one of these bust, old Buster Posey played every oh, day. Yeah, no yada. Yeah. He wasn't getting, he's not catching 130, 140 no. games a year. Exactly. And he gets that contract to come here and be that everyday guy. But also, like you said, he, he, I mean, I, I don't have his career stats up here. I, in my mind's eye, he's a 260 hitter, right? 260, you know, 70, yeah. 20, 20 tops, 25 home runs a year. He'll drive you in 60 to 70 runs on a good right. year. Right. They, I think the, the contract he got, the expectations he came in was to, to exceed all of those numbers. Right. 25 to 30 home runs in, in Queens, right? Because yeah. he's in New York and he's a star catcher now. He's getting paid like a star catcher. Drive in 75 and up runs. And it's just, it's all coming very quick to him. Because two yes. years ago, he, was, he wasn't even a part-time. He was, he, no, he was a, a part-time. part-time. He was a starting catcher. Right. Um, like Detroit, the Detroit days. The Detroit so, days, yes. It's all coming quick to him. I, like I said, I think he can turn it around. I, I trust him as a, as a classy baseball player, but right now it's it's not just the performance. It's it's like we said, it's the quality of that of, of, at bats, it's the double right. plays, it's the ground balls. Like at least if you're gonna hit 200, 205, like show me more in the at bats. I'm not because because there are times where a guy's hitting 205 over a stretch of time, but you're watching and the eye test is like, yo, he, he's he's hitting like 300 right now in my head because yeah. He, he, early in the year was dripping the ball but it was finding gloves yeah man that's what i'm saying aren't finding gloves right now at at all at all and whatnot so yes and so so now uh the next question is a little bit uh the flip side of that uh which player has been your biggest surprise this season oh man that's a good one dude because i the, the first one that comes to mind and there there were a few obviously all right so the two big names that I'm coming to me right now, VR, but I can't say he's too surprising. We talked about this in the off season. Oh yeah. So VR, I'll, I'll, I'll do it because he's coming in and he's, it, it's cons- the consistency is back, which was the big, because like we said, I always knew the guy could hit. Right. He's a free swinger. When he make, when he gets lumber on the ball, he's going to mo- more often than not cause some havoc, like find a gap or he's got, 20, he has 25 home run power, but it was the VR. Actually, I will. I'll use VR because the surprising aspect to VR was the talent was always there. It was the his investment in the game that, that right. was there with him. We were, I think it happened, it happened against the Mets last year where I think it was a 3-0 count to him. And this was one of his last at, at bats. Yes. They shipped him out after because it was like, no, no, no more. It was 3-0. And I think he tried to, he showed bunt, bunt. and missed wound up striking out later wow. in that bat. Yeah. Then they shipped him out to Toronto. It was like, no more from no you. More. But, and, and he got picked off the other night. But how many runs has he created and, and won games on the base path just from him being invested in a game when other guys would be sitting on third base and he's halfway down the line just, just trying to make a play. Yes. So yes. that type of... He, he, he's gamer right now. He's in gamer. El caballo loco. They call him el caballo loco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy he's, horse. Crazy horse right now. So that's 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 my part A. The part B is Sean Reed Foley, man. Okay, okay. okay. My man with the bulldog. That's the bulldog right there. Yes. yes, bulldog. And 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 what's interesting? This is right live to the minute. We're at Sunday afternoon right now, around noon. Saturday night, last night when he pitched, he was hitting 95, 96 on the gun. Yes, sir. The, the the outing before that, he was in the 88 to 89, and, and he commented on his as velo. That it was down from 92. So he, the fact that he's coming out, he was showing that 92 stuff with the slider. Then he just came out and he was throwing 88 with a lot of down breaking stuff. Mm-hmm. Then to pump 96 yesterday, I love what I see from yeah. him playing control. And, and he's also, we've got a lot of flamethrowers in the bullpen. We you do. I mean? So, and, and I was, I texted you about this yesterday, but it, you got to think, especially from a managerial perspective, 
about the composition of arms that you're going to out of the bullpen. Right. So if let's say you're going to get five, you get six from Stroman. You got the seventh, eighth, and ninth. So now you've got to piece together. All right, are we going Castro into loop and then into you know how it's gas lefty lefty gas. Yeah. You want to go familiar, you want to go gas, gas, gas the whole way through. So so Reed Foley gives you an option where it's like, all right, let's let's slow him down here, get the timing off, and then we're gonna hit him with Diaz, we're gonna hit him with Familia the inning after. Right. Um, I love what I've seen from him. I love the control out of the pen. I love the 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 length he gives you out of the pen. Guy can go three innings. Guys throwing two multiple three perfect inning outings. Outings, yeah, man. Yeah, man. This guy's just getting started. Because with relief pitchers, man, there are some guys that come into the league like a starting pitcher, for instance, and you can get by in your first start six clean innings until a guy watches that tape the next day. It's like, oh, okay, he's doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And pitchers can find success early on. It's not not usually that way with relievers. Right. Relievers are going to be able to, because they're coming in for a short period of time, they can... It's more in their play. So I think Reed Foley, if he's having this much success now, yeah. let this guy get some more experience under his belt and how to pitch guys and situational stuff. I'm telling you, man, bull, the Bulldogs want to want to watch. Yeah, he's good. He's really good. And, and, and yeah, I like it too, man. I, I'm going to have to agree with VR. VR's a gamer. You know, to find guys like that. Uh, you know my school. I come from the school of hard knocks, man. I'm old school. I'm not really big on the analytics. Uh launch angle and uh, exit velocity stuff like that i'm i'm you know I, i'm ignorant to that stuff I, I pay no attention to it i'll be honest with you scotty like war all that stuff I, I i don't pay no mind to it you know i did well enough in math to get through and graduate you know but i'm not a mathematician guy i, I i'm a guy that you know i was taught you know you see the ball you hit the ball if you don't see what you like take you know what i'm saying uh certain situations you know, regardless of where I was hitting in the lineup, I I, I was asked to drop bunts many times. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 from what I'm seeing now, these guys are like robots. You know, they don't even know. They didn't even know how to watch the catcher and position themselves defensively. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's to this day. That's how I when I play still, I watch the catcher and that's how I'm lining myself. I don't need nobody to tell me to shift or nothing like that. I hate the proponent of the shift. They use it so much and it burns us every time. We could have a whole other hour conversation on the shift and just the shift in the game, man. That's all the rule changes and whatnot and the, the baseball and the, the increased strikeouts, increased yeah. home. Yeah. All the other stuff. For me, the most eye-popping difference in the game is the, the proclivity to shift against guys. I see guys come up for their first at-bat in the major leagues and they're playing an shift. old shift. I see guys hitting 190, 180 in the league. These guys aren't even putting the ball in play enough. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, analytics is killing the game, man. It really is. It's taking it's taking the human element out of the game, bro. Yeah. It really is. Because soon enough, uh, people want robot umpires. That's next, man. I, I, I don't, I'm really against that stuff. I say, I say make a pair of glasses that can you know some we have we have technology available they make google glass right you can make a pair of glasses that can formulate a imaginary strike zone and it can help the umpire call a strike you can have a yeah, k zone actually, you're you're i'm grinning that's brilliant because there i there are some calls and that that are off the plate i don't know if this is going to come through as, as it's making sense in my head but there are some calls in in the progress of a game that may be I'm talking centimeters off the plate that you have to call a strike. Yeah. So it's like, you don't need the robot who's going to make it black or white, like VAR and soccer. Right. Because somewhere you got to give that centimeter off the plate. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not saying like, I, you know, they, you know, like the guys say, when you hear them, that's too close to take. That, that's exactly. The, that's what you're talking about. That's the centimeters off the plate. That's the, the black of the plate, as they say. That's the best, man. That's exactly what I'm referring to. And that's an old baseball adage. And, and the robot umpires, it's going to take that out of the game. But that's – you. it's too close to take. That means it could be off the plate, but it's too close to take. because And still hittable. And still hittable. Yeah, because you got to shorten up sometimes and protect the plate. You And you got a couple inches of both sides of the plate, up and down, yes, right. Where you, That's a baseball thing. Got to keep that in the game. Yeah. That, that little human element, like you were saying – the little degrees of variance that come. I love watching games. If you watch enough baseball games, you you, you 
over time, you know an umpire strikes them before the game's going to start. Once they show right. the, the defensive positioning on SNY and they have the, the little lineup and the, the yeah. umpire position. I love that you have to play the game. All right, you know, we got Tim Timmons behind the plate tonight. Like, he, he's going to he's gonna extend us. We got to get up there and swing. So, if it's close, if it's around the plate, you got to hack. If yeah. not, he's going to call them all day on you. And if it's a little low in the zone, you got to go for it because we know he's calling those low strikes tonight. Exactly. and that, you know, Little so things like that, man. That's important. Yeah. And even, and even going into that, like the human element, another thing that I don't see enough that I used to see a lot, guys don't choke up with two strikes anymore. No, no. McNeil, I, you, the only guy I used to, see, used to do it, really. He, he chokes up. up. You know, it's rare. You don't see guys choking up with two strikes anymore, man. And, and I hear the guys talking on a telecast, and I'm like, when I was in Pee Wee League, they taught us that. No, <laughs> two strikes, dude, you choke up. Dude, you're, you're, you're hitting on something that is a more widespread baseball concern right now. And I don't know if you caught um, Donnie Baseball. Don Manningly was talking about it the other day about the, when, who was it? The kid on the Tigers threw the no-hitter, and he was just like, this is something, yeah, it's great for the pitcher, it's great for the fans, it's great for the team when guys throw no-hitters, but not great for the game. Nah, you know, it's not. That's, that's not the, the t- type of product that baseball should be. Guys should be up there looking to put balls in play, hit them where they're pitched, make contact, and, 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 and find grass. Yes. But nowadays, the ethos of baseball players is I'm going up there looking to hit home runs. I'm trying to drive it. Yeah. And that's, that's what happens when you see people say, oh, small ball's dead, or the Mets can't do this with guys. And it's, it comes down to how people are taught the game. And I'm, I'm not sure players are taught to choke up with two strikes anymore. I'm sure that they're more, more taught to look, you know, sit fastball on a 2-0 count and look to drive it. It's true. That's true. And that, that approach, although a good approach, you know, in certain at-bats, it doesn't prove that it's successful all the time. You know, no. barreling up a ball, a baseball is super tough to do. You know what I'm saying? You know that, you know, to barrel up a baseball is not very easy. So to ask a guy to hack 2-0, you know, that, that's a 50-50 chance. You're going to rip it. You know, you're either going to yeah. ground out, miss it, or, you know, it's and, and dude, Like I said, we could, we could break off on all these tangents to talk for so, so long. <laughs> I, another thing I've noticed watching in the game, a lot, lot less 2-0 fastballs these days because yes. guys because the pitchers know that these hitters are just looking up there, looking. They're there, yeah. so or they're throwing curveballs now. And they're throwing curveballs and, and junk on two zero. And, and Mets seems like Mets were taking those pitches because they were sitting the fastball, and then the off speed comes and they're just frozen. And right. but yeah, so, to be more reactive hitters, not just sitting on a count. Or yes, totally. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, it's it's just. You know, we've seen the players and the athletes become better athletes than the baseball players of like my generation, so to speak. You know, a lot of guys weren't really fit. You got these guys now, you know, they, they look like robots, so to speak. They all woke up their bodies uh, similarly built, you know, and it's just the game's changed and we have to evolve with it. But at the same time, keep keep it true to itself. You know, don't don't try reinventing new things. And And I think that's it's kind of like for the older guys, like my generation is hurting the game a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. Uh, um, you know, moving on, let's go to the next question I got for you, bro. Um, this is, this one is kind of weird because you know, the, the team has a lot of people on the IL right now, but let's, let's, let's just look at the roster after spring training, the way it was comprised. Do you think the way it was comprised that the team built is built to succeed, like to win? To contend now? All right. So let me preface this. So to answer that question, any team that I would say they can compete now, you got to be able to clearly sit, pick three starters. And, and we're talking about compete for a ring, right? Right. Not saying- no, right. That's that's where I'm going. Yeah, right. Of course. You need to be able to, to identify and trust three starters on the team. So this is hairy to answer, right? Because Mets, Mets could have any combination of, of five pitchers where they can pick the three best out of DeGrom being the only short thing, but it, it could be DeGrom, Strom, and Syndergaard. If Carrasco comes in and pitches great, it could, it could be DeGrom, Carrasco, Stroman could be DeGrom, Carrasco. There could be any combination, but the, the bottom line is they do have, I think they have three pitchers that can go in that series form, the playoff series format when the game slows down and they can, throw the, the rest of their arms into the bullpen, strengthen that. Yeah, I do. 
Um, obviously, they're, they're going to have to hit with with in clutch spots. That's any team that that's going to compete at the highest level. It's that's the differentiating factor, right? When you look at all the teams entering the playoffs when the playoffs start, and then you look at the team that has the ring at the end, that team's going to win that that, that hit in the big spots. Right. It's, it's not. It, that's how it happens in baseball. So, yeah, to answer your question, I, I think the Mets have the roster on paper to compete. Beautiful. It's going to be important to see if the Mets have the roster on the field to compete. Right. That's 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 where the, the question started on paper. Now it goes to the grass, on the yeah. field, like you said. And that's beautiful that you brought up um, contending teams and hitting in big spots and things like that, because this last question that I have for you, the fifth question, and the reason why I chose five questions is because five is my wife's favorite number. And I feel like five, you know, five questions is always, you know, you can get a lot out of five questions. So, and you touched on it a little bit um, to segue into it. You know, we've seen early on the Mets had struggles hitting with runners in scoring position and it's improved slightly with this new bunch. Uh, When we start to get the players back, and if they start to struggle a little bit, again, hitting with men in scoring position, do you see a player that the Mets can possibly trade for um, out there that can come in and help the team get over this type of problem? Is there anyone we can trade for, anybody out there that you can see that can come in and pay immediate dividends and be inserted into this lineup and help them drive in runs and help them get over that, so to speak, hump that they're in right now? That's, t- that's then this is the toughest question of the day, man. And it's, it's, it's that kind of, um, it, it forces us to look past us being stubborn as Mets fans because I've, everyone knows Mets fans, the, mo- the hardest fans in the world are on the team. Yes. But at the same time, we're the loyalists. Yes. Right? So I'm looking at this roster, injuries and all, and I'm like, if with a healthy team, who do I really want to upgrade? The outfield, Dom, I'm fine with. Nimmo was playing all world as we said yes but i'm worried about that finger thing because I, I heard in the broadcast yesterday it's like nerve related oh so, so that's that's that but the outfield healthy dom nimo conforto i'm good i love that outfield man good infield third base whatever lindor mcneil pete i'm good catcher whatever we, we we already made the move there so the third base position is the only theoretical spot I think I could see us upgrading. And, and at the same time, we have a lot of depth there. Now we have three guys, right. VR, JD, and Guillaume when he comes back. All capable, none of them cornerstones. Right, exactly. That, that's why the third base is the reason why I asked that question. Oh, yeah. Subliminally, oh, I didn't want to you know, throw anybody out there. Cause I like JD, you know what I'm saying? I like Guillaume. I like VR. I like those guys. And like you, I do believe that, you know, the way the roster is comprised on paper with those guys playing third base and filling it in every day, we can contend because we do have some excellent starting pitching and the bullpen has been spectacular thus far, you know, the biggest part of the team. Yeah. Incredible. And, and to, to our surprise, because why all, all, off season, that was our main concern. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. The bullpen was our main concern. Everyone is like, "Oh, Familia, oh, Betances, Betances." When he when he threw in spring training, and we saw he was in the eighties, that was cause for concern. When I saw Familia throwing 95, 97, I was like, "Oh, the heat is back. It's going to be a matter of time for him getting that splitter down." And Familia is now throwing the fat, the four seamer more regularly, that's been the difference. Like you said, it's the gas and it's the fastball that goes, you watch, sometimes they show the, the, the side angle when, when he's throwing. Yeah, that yeah. fastball, the four-seamer, it goes up a it bit. Goes up. So yeah, it has it has 97, 98 sinkers and down, down, down. Then the four-seamer, he can throw out and away. Yes. They're not, they're not gonna touch that. And that's why like uh, at first, early on in the season, I said, it's important for his splitter to break for strikes because yeah, yeah. once it breaks for strikes he could throw you that nasty one that's six inches away yeah, you're gonna, gonna swing it's yeah gonna it looks the same when it leaves the hand so as soon as it drops you're gonna swing so yeah. the best thing for him was that he's throwing it for strikes and, and uh yeah the the so leading to the question the my- so, so back to your question none of those guys cornerstones and I said this to you yesterday in the Saturday game, 
where it was like, I said, this is where Lindor needs to, you know, be the superstar, right? Well, he took the and, walk last night. That's right. You said that. And, and so that's coming back to your question of where in an ideal world, where can I see them upgrading? And it's to get a guy that let's, let's, let's play, create a scenario. It's mid October, late October, right? It's a game, game four, whatever. So dog fight, low scoring game. It's going to be one, one late in the game. You need a guy like Chris Bryant. And that's the name I'll throw out just because they shopped him around early and they still, he came out, I think because of a, like a cold or he wasn't feeling well a few weeks ago. And yeah. took, don't be it's that speculation. Guy. <laughs> Up in arms saying the guy got traded. He's been traded already. He had a cold or something. Um, but yeah, that type of guy, man, who is just like, who, that guy's going to go out and win me a game. Yeah, man. Late in the game, we're down two men on, he's going to hit a home run. And I know it's, it sounds like I'm oversimplifying it and to a great degree I am. But I kind of expected Lindor to be that guy. Yes. Think about the game yesterday. It's 1-1 the entire game. Lindor drew the walk late, sure. But that's the type of game he needs to hit a home run and win us the game. Yes. I'm sorry. It's just, it is it is what it is. Where it's like, yeah, yeah we, we started a, and I hate saying this, I say it with the most utmost of love and respect, a kind of trashy lineup yesterday. But it's like, yeah, Lindor's got us. The $400 million man is hitting two or three in there. We're good. Right. We So... That's, that's what I would say. One more guy who it's like, all right, this is going to be the jump on his back. He'll carry us up the mountain guy. Um, I'm worrying that we have a lot of guys that are a notch below that or aren't quite ready. A lot of us probably thought, thought Comforto was the guy for that. He may be a great player. He could have an all-star caliber year still this year. He's not carry me up the mountain yet. Not yet. yet. Pete, not yet. Not until he's... He's just not, he may not ever be that type of player in, in terms of overall. He's a power hitter, but right. Lindor could definitely be that guy. Comporter yes. definitely could be that guy. Even Dom, a guy like Dom Smith could be that guy too. I agree. I think he has more upside than Pete, which is nuts. It, but, um, I mean, uh, as a hitter, as a as an overall hitter, yes. 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 Yeah. A pure hitter. The swing is prettier. 325. He makes, yeah. He makes better contact, you know, to all fields. Uh, he doesn't have the sheer power that Alonzo has. No. Alonzo hits that ball with authority. No, he, he, Not to say a, Dom doesn't, but Dom doesn't have the exit velocity. You know, Dom is just more of a pure hitter. No, and this is a classic um, oh, oh, 90s baseball discussion where it's like, would you rather have the guy that's in that steroid era who's hitting, you know, 55 but 260, 50 home runs and 260, 250? Or do you want the guy that could hit like 35 but over 300? So it's just a... It's what it's a decision type thing. I like the I like the guys that Dom. I, I trust, and also with runners in scoring position. Last year he was like the only guy. He that was could. clutch. He was clutch money. He was clutch money. He was he really money. was, and, and, and you can see like uh, Dom when there's men on, he shortens his swing now. Yes, yeah. He, all of his oppo field hits come with like two strikes in big spot. He shortens his swing up, and and you know he 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 makes it his business to make contact to try to drive the runners in or move them over, you know. Speaking of which, just because, um, you know, you guys, you got a lot of baseball lifers and fans who watch the game, but a player who's like that, man, and I don't know if you've seen him lately, obviously he didn't last year in the playoffs, but a guy who, who blew my mind from an approach um, standpoint two years ago when I saw him, and he, it was the year he just started to break, really break out Bellinger on L.A., and the year he started to hit like 400 for like a couple months. Oh, that he was hitting everything, bro. He was hitting everything. For four two strikes, the guy was taking huge cuts, one hand off the bat. Yeah. Two strikes, he was literally like a tennis player. Just no sure. back swing at all. Just straight to yeah. the ball and like throw the back head wherever it was. That's it. Just make contact ball. and let it fall. If the ball falls, it's going to fall. fall. The ball will fall. You know when the ball won't fall? When you're trying to hit one 500 feet and you swing it over it. You swing um, through it. That's right. Sir. Wow. Yes, sir. That's That was coming, coming back to what I said about Nito, where it's like, Give me the guy's gonna put back the ball. Let's see where the ball lands. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's baseball. It's gonna it could find some green, but you gotta get the back to the ball. Yeah, that's important, man. You have to make contact. You have to make contact. And that's the thing that you know, I feel like they still teach, but it's not taught as much now. You know what I'm saying? It's like be stronger, get stronger, hit the ball harder. I mean, yeah, no, man. It's that's that's it. it's not gonna keep you up. Yeah, you know it's not, it's not, and it's not gonna make you a better hitter either. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. Yo, my guy, you know that that's that's my time for you, man. I appreciate you coming on. My pleasure, uh, you you want to plug away your 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 social media? Where can we find you? Where can we find my man Scotty Pippen at? 
I'm at Scotty Pippen, S-C-O-T-T-I. Um, you know, drop out. I'm usually barking about the Mets or the Knicks or some tennis or some other stuff. But yeah, I'm out there. That's what's up, folks. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been another episode of Bearded Mets Banter. Uh, for my man, Daniel Scotty. This is your boy, Chente Camacho Jr. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next one, peace and love. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. This is a Mets Willis Point Bound 7 local train. The next and last stop is Mets Willis Point.